Um, so our final presentation for today is from Purpose 5, who have teamed up with the government's digital, um, digital experience division. Uh, Purpose 5 is a Victoria-based startup, and they build innovative software, websites, and digital marketing campaigns. Uh, the company is passionate about building technology that communicates to the diverse world by using their experience in accessibility and inclusive design. Um, they are committed to gender balance and promoting women to lead roles on their executive and technical team. And we have some of those leaders in the room today. Thanks for coming over, guys. Uh, so I would like to call up uh, Erin Athene, and, uh, and uh, she's the managing partner of Purpose 5, and David Hume, acting uh, deputy, assistant deputy minister for the GDX division. Oh. Thanks, Sue. You almost gave me a promotion there. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> Uh, um, so I, I'm, I'm David, and, and this is Aaron, and um, most of you won't know what the Government Digital Experience Division is. That's okay. Um, what we do is we focus on two things. We focus on listening to British Columbians about the policies and programs that, that matter to them. Um, we're the team that drives public consultations and public engagement across the province. The second thing we do is we make government's web presence, gov.bc.ca, gov and we like the idea of bringing those two things together in one organization so that we're listening, listening to people and delivering a better, better digital experience for them as a result. Um, Aaron is awesome. <laughs> Um, <laughs> just to introduce you, uh, the, let me tell you about the challenge that we're working on. We are an organization that is right now trying to focus on opportunities to create digital innovation for services across the province. Um, if you know us, we work on a lot of different things. We're, we're, um, you've heard some of it today. You know, we're, we're ba basically taking care of the people and the land of, of British Columbia in, in, in as many ways as you can imagine that being expressed. Well, it's be putting out wildfires or it's helping kids who need help to get, uh, get, get the care that they need or delivering income assistance checks or funding health care or helping kids, funding, funding our schools so that kids get the, the education that they need. Um, and it's awesome to see my colleagues here today sort of displaying the, the power of the work that they do. One of the things about us, though, is that we get very, very focused on our work, which is good. But when we're trying to create innovation and we want to start to build connections, um, it's not always clear to us. We're, fo we're focused and we can't see the overview. And we know that, the, the, that when we take out this wider view, we get, we get a lot of power out of that, the innovation, innovative opportunities of that. But we can't always see it. And so, but when we can, we get great results, right? We can see, we can reduce wait times for people on services they, they care about. We can free up costs so that we can do a better job. I think we talked to today about less whiteboard, more, more systems so that I can be a better social worker. Exactly those kinds, of, those kinds of challenges. And so what we were trying to do is say, well, how can we go from a very focused view where we can't see everything that we're doing? I can't build a list of all the government services that British Columbia de delivers. I don't actually have a central list of all the things that we do. So what would happen if we could start to create that and we could start to see more and more and more connections between who we are, what we do, what the value of the services are that could belong, to, to belong that, uh, for, for citizens and as well for government. So the, the challenge that we put in front of Purpose 5 was to say, can you help us build this picture? Can you help us build this, this idea of what all these different services are doing across the, across the province so that we can start to make better decisions about where to focus public service innovation to improve digital services for British Columbians? I think I've hit them. Okay, good. So the, who, who, who matters in this equation, right? One is the decision maker. One's the, the, the type of person who's sitting at a table going, where do we need to put our investment? They need to be confident about the information that's coming for them. Can they see the measures that, that, that matter for government, to see the quantitative measures that matter for, for citizens, and be able to start to make decisions on that? The two other folks that we cared about a lot were the analysts, right? One, somebody who's going to be hauling this information together to ensure that it's, uh, they're confident and that they can make great recommendations about where an investment in innovation can come. And then the last one is the contributor, is the person who's actually going to supply this information. Because what we know is, is it doesn't come from um, you know, people like me, I can tell you that. Um, it comes from people who are on the front lines who are working, working on these services, who are close, have titles like director of operations, for example, um, who understand what's working and what's not working in the services, and they understand in that focus view 
what services they are that they're delivering to British Columbians. So, but where we want to get to is something where all of these things can come together and you can imagine this dashboard where we can begin to see all the things that we deliver to, to British Columbians. We can begin to see where there are struggles, where are there gaps, are, we, are, are our completion rates low, are they, too, are, they too, are, are they high enough, are the error rates too high, are there things that are matter, mattering where forms are working or aren't working and what's the impact on that service and how can we begin to invest across all of government to be able to, uh, in innovations that will help improve those things. So, you know, where we, my dream is a thing like this, I can tell you I'm a long way away from this, I'm a very long way. But, um, but the dream is to have something like this that allows us to make great decisions as a province about where to focus our innovation. Aaron. Thank you, David. Thank you, David, and by the way, David and his team are awesome too. <laughs> so they were really fun to work with. Um, so at Purpose 5, we think differently about software. You may not know this, but most software is built with a lot of bias. Sometimes people don't even know it. It can be very unconscious bias. But it means that people actually don't find a lot of software and technology intuitive or easy to use. And then they don't update and maintain information. That's kind of the problem. So. We actually believe that software should be really engaging and motivating and actually um, inclusive so that anyone could use it, despite it, or uh, including those with diverse backgrounds and abilities. So we also use quick feedback loops between ourselves and our clients uh, so that we make sure that everything we're building is what they actually need. Yes, that's called agile software development. So we use modern tools uh, throughout our workflow to enhance scalability and efficiency. And we built the software that we're demoing today called InConnect using React.js and Ruby on Rails. Our challenge was building intuitive software that was very flexible to use and would incentivize people to update, maintain, and review the information that they need. Again, we can't thank the team enough at GDX uh, because they were because um, they were real champions for us and they were fantastic to work with. Uh, I'm also really proud of what our talented team at Purpose 5 has built so far, and uh, we really hope that you'll check out our live demo at the back table after the presentation. So we collaborated, oh, thank you. <laughs> we collaborated with GDX and Ernst & Young through customer discovery interviews with BC service providers and built a flexible database based on that feedback. What this means is now frontline service providers can actually create new fields of any data type, meaning they could have, a, could have a list of words or numbers or dates, and they can just quickly add that to the entire database and uh, maintain and update it easily. Now, why is that missing? Huh? That's not. What's missing the slide? Okay. Anyway, you might recognize something like this. This is more of a typical example of what you could be sent if working in government with a little, uh, with a little um, email that says, please fill in. This, this, is, this was the alternative. <laughs> the way we were going to build this list of services, by the way. Little errors came into my eye. So, uh, in contrast... We, this is the InConnect software we built to make the process simple, clear, and hopefully a little bit more delightful, providing a very non-traditional experience for the people in government to use. We use behavioral design to motivate people to fill in data. Uh, and for instance, we show key performance indicators at the top, uh, comparing services along with notifications and progress bars. Why do we do this? because it turns out visual cues really help people take actions, and, it, and when they understand why their work matters in the big picture, they're more motivated to keep it updated. We also included red dots as notification alerts to motivate people to update information so that it can get resolved. This is similar to the psychological pull that many people feel to check their Facebook notifications regularly, <laughs> which you might be doing now. Um, 
<laughs> no offense taken. Uh, it, it works. <laughs> so uh, for accessibility best practices, we also used a digital eyedropper tool <laughs> to ensure that the contrast ratio was high enough so that people who are colorblind can even uh, update their information as well. Different than a one-time entry form, which can be out of date as soon as it's filled out, we created an experience that will empower frontline service providers to easily maintain data so that uh, decision makers can actually trust it, that it's up to date and accurate. There are subtle design choices that we made to greatly increase completion rates and create a form that people don't resist filling out such as showing progress on how the service is changing from the last time they updated so that the contributor can see that impact that they're making. We also added some in-code animations, such as making this trophy dance after you've completed updating a service. Behavioral design elements like these have proven value because people return more frequently to update information. Our next steps are to demonstrate impact. As David mentioned earlier, you know, when they began on this journey and they started seeing uh, just the impact that they could make with um, update, uh, creating more digital services, they found wait times across the province reducing from six weeks to four days. We want to see a lot more of that. We want to demonstrate more of that impact. So we're going to be doing user testing across the ministries, and we're going to connect with existing data sources as automatic inputs for efficient data collection. By using our software, it will be easier to see which services to improve first, how effective different services are, and how they connect with one another. Ultimately, our software has the potential to become a transparency tool for government and citizens. We are excited to build InConnect, a master data management solution for BC. Thank you, and congratulations. You get a trophy for watching this demo. <laughs> Uh, that was great. Um, I know that each of you have an army behind you. Aaron, you kind of mentioned. Um, I talked earlier about that inception day when we're all holed up drinking coffee with post-it notes. Um, some of our rooms were about this big. The one for this project had a lot of people in there. There was an army and they were all really enthusiastic. So it is, uh, it's great to see how far this has come. I'm really excited for the work.